There's a story to be told, a future to behold. There is more to who we are than what they hear. We have love within our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our oil. We can grow the food to feed the whole world square. Agriculture is the key, there's treasure in the trees. The time is now, the land is green, wealth is here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. With all internet things or with all virtual session, you are almost unsure if the people on the other end can hear you. So if you can hear me, please let me know you can hear me. If you can see me, do please let me know that you can see me. Can you see me? Hello? Yes, we can. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So good morning again. It feels, it almost feels like afternoon here because of the heat. But good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sayum Okorare and I'm pleased to interact with you this morning through to early afternoon on this masterclass of business of agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, at this session, we're going to be looking at the practice of aquaculture. 
that's what we will be talking about for the next one and half hours. It promises to be a very interesting session. So I encourage you to, what did they, how did they say it again? Tighten your seat belt <laughs> and sharpen your ears. We're going to cover so much in this niche of, of, of uh, average business, I beg your pardon. And I uh, all look forward to answering some of your questions specifically. Because this masterclass is really about you, most of our content will be coming from you by way of questions. We want you to already note down questions that you'll be coming this, to this session with. And as our seasoned panelists explore um, varied areas on the subject, we also hope that you note attempt to provide clarity or responses to them all as the session goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I welcome you here. My name is uh, Sayum Okorare, and we will have a nice time discussing the practice of aquaculture in this masterclass of the business of agri. Welcome again. Let's go on a short break, and then when we return, we would unravel our panelists. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I bring up our panelists who are really seasoned professionals in this area, as well as business people, I would like to share with you, as I'm thinking you're already aware, that fish farming in particular has gone beyond setting traps at the river or, 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 or streams in our villages and along the waterways where, um, um, made, where farming was majorly done. Now you hear things such as point and kill, if you live, live in, in, in around the, did they call it, it Abuja, Abuja, yes, you know, that's um, the um, north central of Nigeria. You hear things such as point and kill, meaning that fish is not dead. <laughs> that fish is not dead, but it's about to be roasted. Why am I saying that? Just to say that fishing has evolved from what we knew fishing to, to be to what we currently have. There are also modern ways of, of fishing now, of fish farming. People are using tanks. People use ponds that are artificially made. People use all varied you know, methods to raise fish and all that. According to the FAO, around 94 million hectares are used to produce fishery and over 1.4 million people work as fishers. That's amazing data right there. The aquaculture sector records also a production of over 1.1 million metric tons of fish, and that's the highest in Africa. That's very, very, you know, um, and, and, and such eye-opening data. And um, facilitators or practitioners in the sector constantly put up with the challenges like recurring high cost of fish feeds, decreasing yields, and loads and loads of these challenges. These, amongst other things, ladies and gentlemen, are the things that we are scheduled or we've scheduled to explore during this masterclass. Without wasting any much time, I want to begin to introduce our panelists. And the first gentleman that I have here is someone that we call Mr. Ibukun Shoriola. I got that correctly. Yes. So Mr. Ibukun is a gentleman who has led efforts that have also yielded 
As we prepare to welcome him here, I hope internet does not fail us. Mr. Shoriola Ibukum, thank you so much for joining me. Are you there and here and see us? Uh, yes, I can. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and I'm looking forward to having a wonderful session with the audience. Thank you so much. We didn't murder your name, did we? Thank you. And welcome here. No, you tried. You tried. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. The next person, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Amin Mahmoud. Mr. Amin Mahmoud is the managing director and CEO of Megacraft Limited. Do we have him in the building, as they call it? Okay, he's not here yet, but I understand that the next panelist is on. Please make welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Okeleji. Mr. Steve Okeleji is the founder of Aquatic Hub Afrique, and he joins us this morning. Good morning Are you there? Everyone. Yes, I'm here. Are you? Good morning, everyone. Can you see us? Yes, I can see you. Anyway. Mr. Okeleji, can you see us? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Audibly, and I can see you very well, clearly. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Oh, Audibly. brilliant. Yes, I can. Yes. So we're just going to go straight up, ladies and gentlemen, into the business of the day. I welcome you. us in no time now my question to ibukun will be to know what triggered him into the business of or the business of agri and in turn you know the niche of aquaculture ibukun can you hear us okay good morning everyone and thank you uh, okay. So, um, uh, proud to, okay, so number one, just as a background, so I work as a director in Shaldag Limited. Shaldag is, a, is an aquaculture and fish processing company that is based in Lagos. Uh, originally started basically with primary production, producing fish and selling live fish. Uh, but over time, into the you know into the production of uh, smoked and packaged products, which are sold mostly. I mean, uh, through the retail stores. I mean, uh, common retail stores that you have, uh, Pan Nigeria, your shop right, your spa, so on. Uh, so how did I get here? Right, uh, my, my background has always not been in 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 aquaculture or uh, in agri. Uh, but as fate would, would have it, uh, interestingly, my background, my first degree was actually in agri-economics, uh, but proud to get in, into aquaculture, I basically done finance before this time. Uh, I used to work with a private equity firm and the, the, the thought for uh, setting up an aquaculture business actually incubated while I was working with a private equity firm. Uh, way back 2014, uh, 2013, uh, the landscape has changed a, li a little bit since that time, uh, but the market used to be predominated by a lot of uh, small older farmers. And uh, uh, at that point in time, we felt that there's a need to ramp up local production capacity uh, and basically begin to produce some of the fish that uh, fish species that are uh, uh, local to us and common to us uh, in Nigeria in a way that they are hygienic and they, they, they can be better presented to, to the local populace. Uh, back then, a lot of catfish, tilapia used to be imported into the country and we saw the need to uh, 
both gap, you know, uh, local production. And that's how that's how we got here. Uh, so we've been here for the past six, seven years, uh, trying to really improve on uh, in production of fish in the local environment and also ensure that they're produced uh, in a more hygienic manner. Okay, thank you so much. Why is this very important? Sometimes people assume that there is a certain or a, a, a curated method or a strategically curated method of getting into business. So the opportunity to explore what triggered you into this space will help or may help um, viewers this morning to be able to, you know, build up on that and also launch their own nets into the, in, in, into the waters. Thank you so much. Now, um, Stevie, Mr. Okelede, are you also able to share with us what triggered you into this particular niche of business of agriculture? All right. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, my story is a bit different from Mr. Ibukun's story. Uh, I say I'm a privileged uh, young man who was born into an agrarian family. And so my background is agriculture. And it's that on a very large scale. So for me, uh, I have both experiences of being a real farmer and being a business farmer. I studied aquaculture from the Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta. And um, in my second year, what informed me uh, going into commercial aquaculture uh, was basically because of the incessant, which we are used to again, uh, the hassle strike in school those days. And I felt it was just a sheer waste of time for me to keep doing the normal thing. Uh, so I had to just uh, replicate a bit of what I have learned at home as a young uh, sharp. And uh, that was how I started aquaculture in my own second year in the university. And uh, I didn't uh, back out. I never backed out and I will never back out from it because uh, that's my life. Uh, some people also still refer to me as still the fish because I'm so much passionate about this. And um, I tell young people that the way to go is to start very early. Uh, and I want to believe that the population of people we are addressing today uh, are a bit of the young population. Uh, and my counsel or my advice to them is the one that you rightly had that uh, what are the things you probably need to know? Number one is to harm yourself with knowledge. Uh, if you are not knowledgeable enough and you take a foreign into any business, you would lose your, your finances. So for me, uh, I, will be, I will stay on the path of knowledge and every other thing can be added to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. We experienced some glitch there, but um, I did hear a couple of things, and I hope that our participants or viewers also did. We, it, um, it is our prayer that the internet will help us, the, 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 the networks will help us to achieve the objectives of our session. I see that there are a lot of interruptions and then um, panelists going off and on, off and on from my end. Okay, thank you so much. I think that we should just tackle the big elephant in the room before we make further progress. Now the issue of profitability. We see these numbers and these figures and these trillions and billions, white papers, news articles, bloggers, Everyone says that the aquaculture business in Nigeria is extremely profitable. I consider, but if I get to hear from the horse's mouth this morning, then we can validate, you know, this this information that we've obtained from the internet and and the other varied sources. So for me and for our viewers this morning. Mr. Steve Okeleje, how profitable is the business of aquaculture in Nigeria in particular? All right, I'd like to start from your, your, your assertion, uh, saying that the aquaculture business in Nigeria is extremely profitable. Well, uh, I want to be very truthful uh, to you and to our viewers that the aquaculture business in Nigeria used to be 
extremely profitable until we, be, we, we, we fund ourselves in, in, in this quagmire with fund ourselves in uh, globally in terms of uh, the global recession that, uh, that, that, you know, that is a reality that uh, affects everything at the moment. Uh, but we can still do something differently with the aquaculture industry. Uh, I remember back in the days as, 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 as a very young uh, man, we made a lot of money from aquaculture. But unfortunately, uh, as the economy begins or began to uh, you know, struggle, uh, like I said, it affected every facet of our business endeavor. Uh, the aquaculture industry is not left out of this. At the moment, people who are making money are making big money out of the aquaculture projects are people who are able to innovate, people who are able to think outside the box. And uh, for your direct question, uh, my advice is that if you want to really thrive or survive or make more money in aquaculture, you just have to think outside the box. You must innovate. You must embark on value addition. You must also find a way to reduce your internal costs. If you follow the ad rules of uh, the old systems and the old ideologies of running uh, your aquaculture projects, you can never break even. That is the own truth. All right. So, uh, Yes, maybe in the course of our discussion, I'm, I might still have the opportunity to go deeper into uh, some of the strategies that I say that you must adopt. And if you adopt such strategies, uh, yes, you will be able to still make aquaculture uh, business a profitable one for yourself and for the people you also try to also encourage to go into it. Okay. Thank you so much. We are struggling, but I'm hoping that we will overcome. It would have been really lovely to hear everything that is said, but again, I was just able to get pieces, pieces, pieces here, which I have put together. So thank you so much for that. And Ibukun, Mr. Sorry on lack. Would you say that particularly the niche of aquaculture is profitable? Sorry, can you take the question again? I was asking. Now, would you say from your experience, if you heard my earlier comments, I say that we would usually see 1.4 trillion naira dollar industry, 1.2 billion profitability, whatever, whatever, is the business of agri and particularly the niche of aquaculture. Is it as profitable? as we've read on articles, blogs, white papers, and all over the internet. Is it actually profitable? Okay. Yeah, so thank you. And I think Mr. Mr. Okeleji already, you know, uh, dived deep into, into what the crux of the matter is. Uh, I mean, because a lot of the that are listening to us, the small advice would be that people into the space uh, are getting into the space because they are passionate about the space, because they're passionate about solving the problem, uh, rather than uh, you know uh, around the profits around. This. Uh, because, like Mr. Clay already mentioned, the industry has struggled uh, in recent years uh, as a as a result of different things. One is the global meltdown, then it goes to you know, the coronavirus and a couple of things. Right, so, uh, and this generally holds for any part of agribusiness really, you know, it's, uh, it's usually a long haul, right? It's not, uh, it's not a money making venture, right? But that said, 
right? Uh, is, is it a space that, that can yield profit, that's profitable? Yes, it is. Uh, but like, like Mr. Kaleji said as well, it's inch around people being able to innovate, right? One of the things I, I like to think about uh, when getting into business is to ask the question, what problem are you solving? What are you doing differently that, you know, uh, existing producers uh, or existing uh, investor in the business are not doing? Which, which solution are you bringing? We've lost him there. Hopefully he rejoins us as soon. Hello. Okay, Sayum, I'm unable to hear you, and I'm not sure if you can hear me. It's not horrible. You are not audible, ma'am. You are not audible. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. You are not audible. Oh, my God. I can hear Mr. Kelechi, but I can't hear Sayin. Yes, I can also listen to her. I can't, I can't hear her, rather. She, she isn't audible enough.
There's a story to be told, a future to behold. There is more to who we are than what they hear. We have love within our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our oil. We can grow the food to feed the whole world square. Agriculture is the key, there's treasure in the trees. The time is now, the land is green, wealth is here. There's a story to be told, a future to behold. There is more to who we are than what they hear. We have love within our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our oil. We can grow the food to feed the whole world square. Agriculture is the key, there's treasure in the trees, the time is now, the land is green, wealth is here.
Hello. I seem to have problem with my audio and the mic is on and Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. Mahmoud, I can hear you. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think we'll see, we we we'll still have a problem here in Sayum. Okay. You still have problem hearing me? No, no, no. We are good with you. So, uh, okay. myself and Mr. Kelleji, we're, we're joining you as co-panelists. Yes. Uh, but the facilitator okay. is still having a bit of. Hi, sir. Oh, okay. okay. So. So Mrs. Sayum is having some technical glitches, but I think she'll be posting the questions on the private chat. So I think if you read it there, you'll be able to answer it here until she gets her audio together. Sorry for... Okay. All right. Okay, no problem. Uh, okay, so should we, should we then just... Uh... I mean, how do you, how do you determine who, who answers what? Yeah, that's the thing. Let her post a name and then the question. And whosoever name appears there answers the question, at least until we can get things through.
Mr. Okay, Mr. Kennedy, I think there's a question for you uh, in the private chat, if you'd like to attend to it. Yes. Hold on just a minute. I'm not getting that. Stream yet. Check the chat. Is it? It's not giving me the option of the chat. I'm not able to see the chat now. StreamYard. I'm not used to StreamYard. Now, I think on the right-hand side of your screen, you should have private chat and comment under the oh, sign up for sign up okay. or login. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I decided to minimize. Yeah, I can get it. Up. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Am I audible enough? There you are. All right, then. All right. So I have a question here. And the question is, what are the options for entry into the business niche? Okay. Number one, knowledge is critical. For whatever niche you want to decide to going to or focus on you just have to harm yourself with knowledge you must um do all that it takes i tell people uh, the same energy uh, you used to say you want to use to raise funds should be the same energy you need to put into building your team it must be with equal measure of energy so uh, knowledge is critical once you are able to arm yourself with the general knowledge of aquaculture. And then you might begin to say, okay, where's, then you carry out what, what we call the SWOT analysis and see, okay, in the environment that I am, uh, what value chain do I want to focus on? Do I want to focus on fish processing, for example? Do I want to focus on fingerling production, for example. If the soil or the water available in your environment favors you to focus on fingerling production, for example, I advise you to go into fingerling production. But before you even go into fingerling production, you must also go through uh, the extra effort in trying to also make sure you are able to put in your uh, system in place by providing your brew stock the brew stock are the parent fish. The, 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 the parent fish you need for the production of the fingerlings. All right? Uh, this is a bit technical, but for those who are not, uh, you know, knowledgeable enough or those who do not have uh, enough information about what aquaculture is all about, it's important that we also simplify these technical terms so that you can understand what we're trying to say. Uh, all right. So, uh, you, so you need to develop a brewstock bank. If you can't develop a brewstock bank, you can get your brewstock from a very reliable farm. Uh, so in that aspect of aquaculture, for me, if you ask me, uh, you need to study your environment. You need to know what exactly it's required in your environment. If you say, all right, I want to go into value addition. I want to process my fish and sell in my environment. That's also an aspect you can go into. In fact, that's easier to actually uh, interface with. But the question is, how do you create the markets? All right? So it's important you, you, you also come up with a strategy to say, uh, my product must be that that is healthy. My product must be that that is acceptable. Uh, and, but before you even do that, you still have to go through the basics, which is the technical training you need to also go into, uh, subject yourself to rather, uh, to make sure you have the critical and the, you know uh, the critical knowledge needed for you to also be able to uh, go into fish processing. And that's very important. And you might decide to say you want to raise the table fish. Uh, and then you, you get your juveniles from a, from, from, from a fish producer, a fingerling producer, and you raise them into a table size where you can sell. So, uh, so it depends on 
uh, what interests you and your environment uh, also will also uh, help you decide the aspect of uh, the value chain you want to play. We can't hear you, ma'am, just in case you can hear us. We can't hear you. I think you need to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. Loud and clear, yes. Yeah. Yes, we can now. I said, I think technical... Muted me. There's still some noise going on. From noise that's very heavy. Okay, so I think that there are connections to ways. So I exit via one. In hope that yes. Okay. So please, am I sorted now? Can you hear me? Are we good? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. At least I can. Please, can you hear me now? Yes. Audible. Yes, I can. Wow. Well, what do we do? Can you hear me now? Can you see me? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you I very well. I can see well. and hear you. There's a story to be told, a future to behold. There is more to who we are than what they hear. We have love within our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our oil. We can grow the food to feed the whole world square. Agriculture is the key, there's treasure in the trees. The time is now, the land is green, wealth is here.
All right, uh, Adoja John, uh, I can see your question. Uh, I think while waiting, uh, we could just uh, give an answer to your question. Number one, what you need to do. Uh, okay, let me let me put it this way. It depends on your scale of production, really. If you are on a small scale and you intend to reduce your cost of feed, you might consult a nutritionist, the fish nutritionist, to help you compound a proper feed formulation that you can use on your farm. And that means if you don't have the wherewithal to also put up a small feed mill in place, you still have to approach a tall milling company or a factory uh, with your feed formulation to also buy the feed ingredients and formulate your feed. That you can reduce your cost of production. Uh, the other aspect is you should also, first of all, do what we call internal reduction of costs. If you are operating on a large scale and your overhead comes from diesel, for example, it comes from uh, payment of staff. It comes from rent and some other fixed cost. I fix, you know, I cost on fixed assets. Uh, you might have to change your strategy totally. Uh, what I tell, or what what we advise large firms, because I'm aware of quite a number of large firms that are not able, even with all that they have done in trying to also to see how they can reduce the cost of production, uh, why they have not been able to break even is because they have not changed strategy. So our, our, our advice to them is that you just have to change your production strategy. For example, if you have a farm that runs on diesel 24-7 to pump water, it becomes difficult for you now to break even because of your high cost of production. All right, so what such farm needs to do is to create an alternative uh, that would allow you run your farm operations on what, what, what I call almost a zero cost on energy. You can explore the cage culture option. The cage culture option, it's a no-brainer idea that allows you to run your farm after you must have carried out your feasibility with an expert to, to you know, there are some other uh, tests we carry out on water, limnology precisely, to see that, okay, is this water 
are good for us to culture our fish. For example, if you go, say, because you have a large water body uh, and you go to the Niger Delta area, for example, where you have spillage of, of oil, uh, that kind of a place might not be suitable for you to put your cage or your cages. So my advice to people is, now that it is becoming more difficult to reduce the cost or let me say more difficult to access and buy feed ingredients because the insecurity challenges in Nigeria has also contributed to the high cost of feed production in Nigeria because farmers are not able to plant these crops on their farms. Farmers are not also able to access their farms because of these insecurity problems, all right? And the very few ones that are able to also go to the farm are not able to also access, uh, they are not also able to access, you know, adequate finance to be able to get the right equipment to upscale, all right? So, so the, the, the few farmers that are able to produce will be left with no choice than to sell at a profitable price. And that will also affect the price at which you will be buying as a farmer. So say, okay, yes, I want to buy these ingredients and I also want to uh, make my own feed. So anybody who wants to go into aquaculture and anybody who wants to stay profitable in aquaculture should come up with strategies that allow you to spend almost nothing on diesel. No aquaculture firm can survive in this present time with a very high cost of diesel. You must change your strategy. For example, on some of our farms, we have seen this a long time ago, more than three years ago, and we are taking that quantum leap and the you know, uh, the, the strategic decision to say we cannot continue with this model. Imagine you have to pump about, you need, you need diesel to pump about 120,000 liters of fuel, sorry, of water uh, every two hours on the farm. And uh, before now, we used to buy diesel at a very cheap price of 120, 160. And later it became 320. So we, 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 we had seen that a long time ago to say that for us to stay profitable in this business, we have to do something about this. Oh, and now this is about 800 naira per, per, per liter. So there's nothing you can do to that. And your selling price of product, when time you go to the market, you are competing with other people who have all the alternative uh, systems of culture that are less cheaper. And if you agree with me, I, I keep telling people that uh, our economy is driven better with smallholder and small-scale farmers. And, uh, you know, smallholder uh, farmers help, you know, this economy better than even the, the big uh, scale farmers. Because if you put a pool of 10 to 20 or about a thousand small older farmer producing 5,000 pieces of fish, when you put that quantity of fish together, it is equal to you putting all your resources and efforts and money into a very big project. That right. At the end of the day, your, your, your overhead goes up but the small older farmers have small ponds at the back of their homes and they are able to make reasonable profit when they sell. All right. Thank and you, Mr. Steve. All right. Uh, just permit me to cut it here. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I think it's afternoon now. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Steve, uh, Mr. You. Amin, and Mr. Um, Ibuku. Um, again, yes, to our distinguished um, guest and audience, we'd like to apologize. Um, we've been having some. Uh, technical issues. It's been a rainy day um, right here where we are. So I assume that um, our moderator, Sayum, is still having issues. Uh, so I'll just pick up from here and see how we can drive the conversation. So I want to crave the indulgence. I know we have some time uh, already spent, so we'll try and manage uh, the time that we have to see how we can address. So I would like all panelists to please, uh, for the subsequent questions that will be coming, we'd like you to go very cripsy, very short, and just lead us um, into it. I know we've touched on a number of things when we started. So Mr. Amin, uh, I'm just gonna like to start with you very quickly. And I'm gonna just speak one of the questions that has come up earlier. And the question is this, um, everybody is going into aquaculture. For you and for us as young people and someone who is a novel person going into this, 
what aspect of aquaculture would you advise advise that we go into and why and what level of resources do i need to also go into that okay thank you good afternoon all once more um the aspect of aquaculture well mostly first of all you're thinking of interest whatever it is that drives the person to want to go into aquaculture probably he has a direction he wants to go to whether he wants to uh, set up a hatchery or he wants to uh, be in the grow out uh, area or even processing but whatever the first thing he needs is knowledge there is no limit to the amount of knowledge you can have in any area you want to go into as a business so the knowledge of the aspect of uh, fish farming he wants to go into whether hatchery uh, marketing uh, grow out or just processing is paramount that's the first thing i'll advise especially for our young uh, people uh, having interest in this um the other aspect i'll say is also uh, whatever it is you are picking you have to first of all know your market if you are doing the hatchery then who are the farmers around you that are likely to want your product and you also need to check your competition who am i competing against now these are all very important things to look into before you make the leap and when you do make sure you have enough of the equipment you need for whichever aspect of the uh, fish food chain you want to go into uh, when you have the right equipment and the right knowledge then and, and of course the right financing then i think you are good to go okay awesome thank you very much i like how crips and how short your answer as well so i'm just going to pick you from your answer and then i'll go to uh, mr ibukuna before i come back to mr steve um so mr amin just mentioned to us now uh that you need to have the request requisite knowledge uh you also need to understand who your competitors are but i want to ask you a very direct question you are a practitioner in this field i'm a young person with very little experience when it comes to aquaculture which of these value chains within or which of these sub value chains in aquaculture would you advise a young person like me uh, who has a loose cash to to spare to go into okay uh so i mean so i'm gonna just lean on uh our experience with you know with the business uh we've seen more value coming from processing uh you know uh than from live fish production and i think the the reason it's quite uh straightforward right um uh i think uh with processing you can do a little bit more branding and uh you know around packaging and really distribution your products uh and creating a niche market for your products uh whereas with selling live products it's more like a commodity where the, you're only uh you're only competing uh the only basis of competition or distribution yourself is just price uh so technically you will see with live fish sales uh, uh the only thing you're competing on is, pr is price it's every every 20 naira, every 50 naira, every 100 naira that can be saved uh it really doesn't matter uh to most of the buyers how you basically produce your product uh whether uh you use antibiotics or you've not used antibiotics or you've done you've used premium feed or you've not used premium feed the only thing people uh you know want to listen to is how much is it right uh with with with, with branded products and processed products you can distinguish yourself a bit more and like i said you can create a niche market for your product and just target that market awesome awesome i think i i, I like that um so already giving us an insight into the kind of aquaculture business, you know, we should be looking at. Uh, I Earlier, uh, Mr. Steve did mention some of the challenges when it has to do with growing. You have to spend a lot of money having to pump water, particularly for those who might be using, you know, artificial tanks and not the natural habitats and all. That's fine. So my next question goes to Mr. Steve. Uh, and again, thanks again to um, Mr. Mahmoud. I think I'll prefer to call you that now. Uh, and then Mr. Ibukum for... Uh, Elia laid some good uh, platforms for us to further, you know, push this question. So my next question to Mr. Steve is this: um, Haven't distinguished now from the earlier um, panelists and and saying, you know, processing is the right way to go. I see a number of young people today wanting to have small tanks just, you know, at behind their homes and wanting to put fish there and see how they can manage that. Would you, from your world of experience, and I know you also deal a lot with young people and also sponsor a lot of young people, do you think that is the right way to go? Do you think there is value in quotes or there is business in that, you know, small 
chain production they are having when compared to processing that you know uh, Mr. Ibukun just talked about. Absolutely, yes. Uh, great value. Uh, so it comes back to what I was saying about uh, encouraging small older farmers to go into production. We came up with something in our institute uh, we, uh, with a program, and we why we did that program was to sensitize and to help people produce the feed they can consume. All right, we looked at it and said to ourselves, uh, we have a gap of over over two point four million metric tons of fish needed in Nigeria. And that's where the money is, really. All right? And so how do you promote, how do you stimulate local production? How do you encourage young people to go into production? All right? You can feed your family from the initiative of the program we initiated uh, recently, which uh, we also mentioned to uh, British American Tobacco uh, then Foundation then, uh, the, the Neighborhood Impact Program. Uh, it's for us to see how we can encourage young people to go into fish production at the back of their homes. And so the beautiful thing about it is that you have been able to feed your home, your, 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 your homes, and you are also been able to make some money from it. And the smartest way is what two panelists have said, uh, which is we have to go into processing, value addition, all right? So if you are able to add value to the fish you produce, and you come up with a strategy to say, within my neighborhood, that is the niche market. Within my neighborhood, I want to sell this fish every Thursdays and every Fridays to people who, who, who will need it in, in their homes and for parties. And that you find every, every, every time in Nigeria. All right. So uh, it's a no brainer. It's a fantastic strategy to encourage and to stimulate young people to go into backyard farming. Uh, not just young people, women uh, and retirees too, to go into backyard farming to see how we can also boost and increase the production of farm-grown fish in, in, in Nigeria, as against we opening our gates for importation all the time. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Uh, again, clearly, it, it, it's very obvious, and I, I think our panelists and, and, and um, even participants here would have seen that you know majority of our panelists are tilting towards having to process and uh, which a lot also has to do with you know whether i'm producing within the smallest scale that i have or in a very big scale for me to be able to in quotes you know get the crunch or the full value of the business i'm doing it's very important that we go into value chain so this brings me to the next question and i think i'm picking cue from some of the questions that i'm coming from uh participant uh mr ibukun you stressed earlier that there was a need for us you know to go into processing 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 so if i am not in the same boat like mr steve said where i'm producing and processing and i have to buy uh, my fishes and then process and sell. How do I then manage, you know, that sale and marketing space that I'm not exploited by um, the middlemen? Uh, you might need to unmute. Yes. Yeah. So, so, I mean, so that's a brilliant question. And I say that uh, because one of the things I've seen with much younger people uh, coming into the space is that. Uh, people pick up this data uh, from the internet or that's available, oh, there's uh, this gap in the market, uh, you know, local production is 1.1 million tons, uh, you know, consumption should be 2.4, there's 1.3, and people pick that data without doing any bit about marketing, how do I sell this product, how do I do, you know, do I have a target market, who do I sell this product to, and people just invest their capital and say, okay, I want to start producing, and at the end of the day, you are stuck with, uh, you know, uh, you know, live fish at the point of sale and you have no one to sell to, right? And at that point in time, uh, you're then asking yourself, because you, at that point in time, you are the messy of the middleman because you really don't have a market, right? So if they come to you and say, you know what, uh, you know, I can only buy it at X, you know, uh, because you know that for every day you keep keeping the fish, you're incurring cost of feeding Absolutely. and there's possible mortality as well at that point in time. So. Uh, at the end of the day, you you might box the pressure from the middleman, right? Uh, with processing, it's 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 the, 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 it's still there. I mean, right? If you don't do your bit about understanding what to sell to, you're still going to be stuck with products products that you've processed uh, and you can sell. 
you might not have to fit them because of course they are processed products, uh, but the carrying cost of the products are there, right? And the products also have a shelf life, right? So it's important to, so basically what I'm trying to say, it's important to uh, understand that it's, you need to understand marketing and distribution and sales. Right, it needs to be taken as important as it is to have the technical knowledge of knowing how to produce the fish or where to set up or you know whatever it is. Right, it can't be backstage. Everything has. So I need to understand how to grow the fish. I also need to understand how to sell the fish. You know whether I'm into live fish production, I'm into processed products. Right. Uh, uh, I think uh, currently, I mean, with the dynamics that we have uh, for a processor. Uh, you know, so if you have, if I have a young person that say, okay, you know what, I want to process, uh, how do I get my fish? You know, uh, I think what would what, what would be good is to have direct linkage with the farmers, right? Uh, there are a lot of cluster farmers around, uh, you know, depending on where you are, where you can basically walk into the cluster and say, you know what, this is what I'm planning to do, and I want to link up directly to farmers. Right, instead of relying on middlemen to, to come supply the product and maybe put their own margins in there. So what I would encourage is to have direct connection with, with farmers uh, so that uh, you know you can you can reduce that uh, uh, additional margin in bet uh, between the farmer and then the, the processor. All right, thank you very much. Um, I would have raised a question very quickly around you know how to break the cartel of the middlemen. Uh, particularly for young people going into business. But let, let me wait a little bit. Mr. Mahmoud, I would like you to just answer this $1 million question, if you permit me to put it that way. Uh, and a young person just writes and says, um, um, I do not want to go to the farm, uh, but I have 500,000. You know, can you just tell me uh, what business in aquaculture I can jump into now? Let's forget all the um, internal steps that we need to know. Let's just say, everything the environment is good for example favorable the environment is good and i have five hundred thousand, but i do not want to go to the farm myself but i want to go into aquaculture can you just help me out how can i do that and how will i be profitable as well okay yes i'll advise any young man with a uh, half a million naira in his hands not wanting to go to the farm like he said uh but wants to be in the aquaculture business i'll suggest he goes into processing uh, processing one, you can buy fish direct, as one of the panelists so said, direct if, from if the If you farm, mind me just to cut you a bit, I know you mentioned Sorry? processing. Yes, I just say, if you mind me to cut you a bit, I know you mentioned processing. So if you can yes. just help us put numbers to it, maybe 500,000, it means you'll be able to invest this amount and you'll be getting, I just want to get a feel of okay. what the numbers for, for the look For the processing like. I have in mind, uh, you require a certain, some piece of uh, equipment. At least he needs a deep freezer okay. and a small cane. Okay. So when he buys the fish, whatever quantity, because he started small and for it to grow. So when you have a deep freezer and you know you have constant power to power that freezer, you have a smoking cane, preferably gas smoking cane. Then I think he can go and buy, uh, let's say, 200,000 naira worth of fish at a time, smoking it. Uh, filleting some and freezing because there's a good market for filleted fish and right now it's mostly been uh, fish fillets are just being imported you see them in most of the supermarkets you go and they're so expensive that if you buy 10 kilograms of uh, our local uh, fish and fillet them by the time you sell them or you compare them in weight to what is imported you'll see that it's about uh, three, four times, you know, uh, the imported one is about three or four times the cost of the same local one you can buy in the market. So you can make a lot of money selling filleted fish and then smoking some. You can smoke chunks, cubes, and sometimes even if you can, get a sawmill and granulate because granulated fish is another thing that not many people are into. But I believe if someone goes and invests into granulated fish, which can be used in our traditional uh, jollof rice, and of course other uh, soups and foods we eat. I'm sure whoever it is that has about half a million and wants to go into processing, I think these two areas are areas where I'm sure he'll be able to make some good money. Of course right. not uh, to forget the fact that if he, he has to invest in branding his product very well. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Mama. I think you were spot on. I tried picking some of your words and to pick the figures, and maybe I could also help um, educate some of our panelists based on what you said. Okay. I know you used a lot of terms, but you know some of us are not as um, savvy in the aquaculture okay. space like you. You mentioned kin. Uh, so okay. uh, from my layman knowledge, I'll just try and probably help you reiterate that kin um, is what you use in processing your fish. Uh, yes, in, the, yes, yes. in the very crude stage, we have those women who smoke using using some pans and all. So this is a much more uh, hygienic and sophisticated way um, of smoking. So yes. that's keen. You also talked yes. a lot about fish filleting, which are, of course, the value chains that we have. And I know a lot of people will say fish filleting. Anyway, we have Google now, so they could search it out. But I know we've actually deboned. There are no bones. You've taken out the, the, yes. the skin, if I would say, and you just have you know the raw uh, yes. fish, so to say, which we then eat. Well, picking yes. some of the numbers, I know you said you could we could get things, you could get um, fish, 200,000 worth of fish. So my assumption is that buying the deep freezer and the smoking cane would probably cost around maybe 250, and then they have 50,000, there are maybe additional working it's running capital. Costs. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And uh, But one figure you didn't give me, I, I would just like you to see if you can share is from the 200 kg smoking, uh, smoked fish now, or processed fish, uh, what kind of return should I be expecting? Gross now, not necessarily profit. Well, of course, uh, depending on how aggressive he is in his marketing, I don't know. I should say for each uh, cycle, that's each set for that 100, he should be able to, after processing, get 50%. 50%? Uh, yes, wow. that is doable. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. So he's making... Is making about um, three hundred thousand and hundred 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 thousand. We about three hundred after investing two hundred. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. So uh, let's move on now. I want to push straight to Mr. Steve, and I want to throw the same million dollar question to him. Uh, but this time, uh, I want to throw it in terms of archery. I hear a lot of people say, "Oh." It is very easy to arch. All you need, just need a bucket. <laughs> and then you need a brood stock. Brood stock, by the way, are the parents, like your mother and your father. I'm, I'm trying to also educate our, our audience so that they also have some feel of this. And they say it is very easy. I've even heard people say, oh, all you need is just um, 50,000 naira. And you can begin to sell them very easily. So, Mr. Steve, I'd like to throw the question to you before I come to Mr. Ibukun and just help us say, we want to run a business in aquacor in, in, in archery now. Um, what do I need? And can 100,000 in this case, can it do me any good? And if yes, you could also just help us put numbers to it as well. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, it's, it's indeed a million, a million dollar question. Uh, the archery business is a different ball game entirely. And um, I tell people, for you to run a proper archery successfully, you need knowledge and experience, and you need the right attitude uh, to run a proper archery. Number one, not everybody can run a archery. The factors of production that, that you must consider mostly is your water for archery, for people who want to go into archery production. Your quality of water, water quality is very important. If you live in an environment where you have ions in your water, you will struggle to produce fish. And if you are not consistent in production or in business, then there's no point you doing business. So I tell people, if you have a situation where you have a terrible water parameter in your own environment, what you need to do is to outsource production to another farm or to another farmer to produce fingerlings for you. You don't have to be jack of all and master of all, all right? And so if you get it right, for example, if you have your water parameters well-checked and they're okay and they can meet all the favorable conditions that can allow the fish to survive, then... Yes, it's a no-brainer. But it doesn't stop at that. Your attitude to running a proper archery to matters. You must have that positive attitude to learn and never to get frustrated because you are dealing with nature. If you ask me the hardest parts that I've been through in life in my 
aquaculture experience is the actual experience. And I didn't give up until we were able to crack that industry. The most difficult aspect of aquaculture is the archery. But it's also the money spinner. Because if you get it right, it becomes a roller coaster for you. You are able to project and say, this is what comes. And getting it right starts from you having a very good brewstock. So I've mentioned water. And then we've defined what brewstocks are. These are the parent fish, daddy and mommy of the fish, for lame, for, 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 for lame understanding. So if you have a good quality brewstock, you have good water parameters in place, you have the right attitude in place, and then you have electricity, and then you have the right staff to also support you in terms of attitude. Uh, because I keep you know, hammering on attitude because the attitude of uh, the people who are to manage your hatchery for you, especially when you now grow big, it's, so, it's as important as your own attitude. At the time in our so, own farm. A quick one, Mr. Steve, if I could just interject you there. I would like you to just help put numbers. Uh, I know you've okay. talked about, you know, uh, some of water impurity, consistency in production to ensure that you can keep your market. But now in terms of the numbers, so I have 100,000. One, tell me, is it sufficient to start an archery? And then no. what can I do with that 100,000? <laughs> don't, don't apportion 100,000 for archery, for a serious archery okay. operator, except if you want a laboratory experiment. All right, so you put it in a minimum of about 500,000 too. All right, okay. where let's say you inherit a borehole, you inherit a well, you don't have to do that. Uh, all you need to do is to have a backup generator, a small generator, and then you need to have your receptacles where you can, you know, begin to start your own little hatchery, maybe at the back of your house in the tarpaulin vat or in the plastic vat. Uh, that's you can still put all, you know, the cost of doing things in Nigeria has gone up generally. So uh, 500,000 is just very adequate for any young person who is also prospecting into going to actual. So, how operation. quickly can I get returns and, and, and by what percentage would you want to put that? <laughs> so, everything still you know, comes around your skills, management, really. All right. Assume you have all these parameters I've mentioned in place, then your management is also very important. So, but if you let's assume you get it all right, okay. Uh, if you put in, let's say, for your production, yes, fixed assets, you spend about maybe two hundred to 300000 on fixed assets and for your running cost, another 200000 on your running cost, uh, and you're able to have higher survival. So what you should do as a smart archery owner is to always work towards survival of your fish. You, are, you can never be richer than the amount of fish you're able to produce, all right? You can never, let this stick uh, for those who are you know, planning to go, you can never be richer than the amount of fish you're able to produce and sell. Okay, so all you need to work towards is how do I attain survival? I survival. If you are able to do 200,000 in six weeks to eight weeks, and then you do the multiplication of 200,000 fingerlings in six to eight weeks by maybe 10, 25 naira that you are selling at the moment, or for about maybe uh, three grams of uh, fingerlings at the moment, uh, so that you can begin to smile to your bank. But it's not just going to happen like this. You would fail. But if you don't back out, you will succeed. Anybody who tells you if you go into hatchery production, you begin to make money, uh, is not telling you the whole truth. You will have some failures in production. Uh, but if you are able to master the hat and you are able to acquire the right knowledge and skills, uh, you will definitely succeed with hatchery production. Thank All you. right. Thank you very much. Uh, I think so. You've been able to help demystify uh, some of the notion you know we have learned over the years. So, you know, actually. When it comes to aquaculture, is the easiest, you know, to master and the best in terms of profit. But like you said, um, and like Mr. Mahmoud also said, the rougher the road, they say sometimes, you know, the brighter the end. So no matter how tough it could be in terms of archery, if you're able to master it, stay consistent, ensure that the management is right. Uh, Mr. Steve, uh, 2022 says, you know, you'll be reaping big when it comes to that bit. So I'll go to uh, Mr. Ibuko now, but now I'll try and twist the question a little bit, but still the million dollar question. Uh, I'm trying to run, so I would like you to run two things for me. First, I hear people say Etten Pond, you know, does better than, you know, the concrete ponds. Uh, but today, for example, in, in, in the likes of Lagos and very busy metropolis, just like we have, most people do not have the opportunity to do earthen ponds and will probably be doing tank or even concrete. 
So how much do I need, for example, as a young guy, I have a job, but I just want a multiple streams of income and I'm looking into aquaculture. And in this case, um, maybe raising to table size just behind my house. So could you help me crunch numbers of what I think I need to do to be able to stay profitable and to be able to also survive by making additional stream of income for myself? Yeah, but, but by, I mean, you want me to stick to using which production method? Um, so if we just want to, so maybe first you just want to educate us a little bit uh, in terms of ethane pond and then concrete pond. And then for the benefit of those of us in quotes, uh, in very busy metropolis who do not have opportunity for ethane ponds, but have to use maybe tanks or concrete pond. Uh, you just want to also educate us on what we need to do and how we can also make money from it. Maybe again, using the half a million cap as our initial starting capital. Okay, so, I mean, I, I would answer the question, uh, but I would answer the question because you asked, but if you're asking me, uh, do I think someone with 500K should do production? I'll tell you quickly, no. Uh, but just for the sake of the fact that you asked the question, uh, really, for me, the end game is market, right? And the end game is, you know, uh, uh, one thing I tell myself is that if uh, I'm going to produce uh, uh, a premium product, I need to be sure that that premium can be paid for. Okay. I right. think the weather has changed. I need okay. to it's back. Hello? Hello? Yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. We lost you for a moment. Yeah. So so basically what I'm saying is that whatever value you're adding, you must you must be sure that the market is is willing to pay for it. And I'm gonna share this experience with you, right? I mean, we started out uh and we still do, but we started out saying that we're going to produce products without the use of aqua, you know, of antibiotics. Way back in the day when there used to be discriminated use of antibiotics, uh, when people are growing their fish, right? Uh, that I mean, that that's changed a bit, uh, but but that's how we started out, right? But one thing we, I mean, and also of course use premium feeds. I mean, uh, targeting top feed producers and really just getting feed from them, uh, you know. And one thing we're quick to see, you know, coming to the market is that the market really doesn't care, right? Uh, uh, at the end of the day, it's the fact that you have a table-sized fish and the next guy has a table-sized fish. No one is drilling down into which production method did you use to get to it. You know, are you farming responsibly or you're not farming responsibly? And because of that, your products still end up being sold as a commodity, right? And that's why that my, my mantra about uh, whatever it is, I, again, I go back to the issue of the fact that marketing and sales needs to be, you know, to be front burner. Right. If you're going to produce in a certain way to to whether you're adding value, you're doing whatever it says, you need to be sure that the market will pay for it. If not, you need to ensure that you are the lowest cost producer. Right. Because at the end of the day, the only way you can compete is with price. Right. So you need to be able to really whatever the cash, wherever you're thinking of investing is to come back and say, you know, what, if I decide to do concrete and I, I decide to use an 18 pounds, what is the cost structure? What are going to be my possible cost structure? And now I'm not even talking about the capex because the capex is sunk. So once you do your, even with, uh, with your concrete, once you do your concrete, it's done. I mean, it's, it becomes your fixed asset that you can use and use over time. I'm really talking about your operational cost, right? Uh, so, uh, so operationally, am I going to, going to be more efficient using a concrete pond or using an etting pond? And you need to be able to come up with numbers and those numbers should drive your decision in terms of where exactly to go to. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but yeah, no, uh, it, it does make perfect. sense. Though I exp I wanted you to probably give some numbers, but you 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 did say that you know you wouldn't even advise anyone with five hundred thousand naira. Uh, yeah, because I, I mean, with, with five hundred k, my guess is that if you're doing concrete, I, I I wouldn't advise that you do concrete because I mean, with the escalation we've seen in construction cost over the time, you know, it's probably going to take a, a big chunk of the money. Right, so I would I, I would advise with a 500k that you try to to save on capex as much as possible, so that bunch of that 500k will go into operation. Right. All right. And awesome. That, Fantastic. That's the reason why I'm going to choose. Uh, uh, yeah, good. Going to choose. Yeah. That. I, I think it's fair enough, and I think it's good that you are bringing perspective into this conversation, because for for people like me who wants to go into this and have very little experience, I think we are getting some detail. No matter how lucrative, in quotes, it's been painted to us, we are getting to see that there are sides to every coin. So I'm going to go straight to Mr. Mahmoud. And this question is born 
out of some of the conversation uh, that came from Mr. Soriola, but we are out of time. So we will just try as much as possible to wrap up in the next five minutes. I know we lost some time due to some network connectivity earlier on. So the question is this, Mr. Ibuko did say that what we should look out for is to see how we could be the lowest cost producer. That's the only way we can compete in the market, right? So I've oftentimes seen people say, oh, when it's time to sell your fish, feed them with eba a day before or feed them with all manner of things to ensure that they gain weight so that when you know your customers are coming to buy you know it has also eba i hope okay we're all in nigeria so we know what eba is now right so yeah just to ensure that you know it has so much weight and that when people are buying they get to pay bigger for it so how would you say in this context of our conversation that we can be the least cost producer in whatever area of the value chain we are currently operating on. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, the best way to be the least cost producer is one, to produce a good product using best practices. And like Mr. I think Steve said initially, that trying to cut any excess expenditure in your farm, that will not impact, of course, on the growth of your product or the quality of the product. So I think if you really study the market and get your inputs from the right places and make sure you give the right inputs and then stick to best practices, then your fish will be happy and they will grow in good time if you are a grower. If you are in the fish seed uh, area, your uh, fingerlings too will be able to grow in a very fast and uh, of course using the best resources available and as much as possible keeping your costs down. That's the best thing because uh, imbibing on sharp practices like feeding your uh, fish with a bar just because you're about to sell them, definitely it's just a matter of time before your customer gets to you know, discover your tricks and from that time on, they avoid your product and no good farmer wants that. You want consistency, you want your market to grow so that you can be able to farm more and sell more. So I think wow. I will just encourage, uh, you know, good practices in the production and trying as much as possible to lower cost because following the good practice will really help you lower cost because if you don't, that's when disease will come. That will mean more expense. So keeping your expense low means doing whatever it is that will now help you maintain that good practice and produce very good fish. Thank you. Oh, fantastic, Mr. Mahmoud. I think it's clear to us uh, following the good practices uh, is germane to ensuring that you have the lowest cost possible um, for production. A slight change in or deviation in that process results in you know you having to spend extra maybe through sicknesses if you permit me to call them uh yeah. sicknesses and then even in the case losing your customer uh in the long run mm -hmm. i would have loved to ask yeah. mr uh, steve the same question um but i think I, I i see a question here and the question says um uh, this is from adewale balogu he say if you don't mind you can share my details with him okay i can connect him to processors who can buy his product if they are produced responsibly. So this is one of the benefit of the Business of Agriculture Masterclass. And thank you to uh, Mr. Ibukun. Uh, so if you hear me, um, Adewali Balogun, um, what you can do, um, you can just write directly to PSAG, um, which you also see the handle on the, um, on the YouTube page. Just write directly to them with your details. And then we will connect you with um, Mr. Ibokun, who can also support you in that challenge that you have. So if you're hearing me from wherever you are, Edo State, Abia State, Nasarawa, Bornu, please, if you would have opportunities to interact directly with our, our panelists, I think they've obliged us so much here uh, today to also support you in any little way. Uh, like they say, smallholder farmer, that's the best way to go. Let us grow in our little chunks. It makes, of course, the whole basket that we enjoy today. So by way of conclusion, because I've been notified again that our time is up, uh, I'd just like to get a, a 30 seconds breather from all of us. And in no particular order, Mr. Steve, would you like to start for us? I, I, I want to say that I'm an advocate of young people going into uh, agriculture and when you go into agriculture make sure you harm yourself with the right knowledge 
you might lose all your investment, no matter the billions you are able to access if you don't drive it with the right knowledge. So knowledge is critical. Do everything to, within your powers to make sure you acquire the right knowledge. And you also build the right team as you begin to grow. You must also do everything within your power to make sure you have the right people to work with. That is the life of your business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Ibukun, I jump to you now. Okay, so quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pick on, uh, you know, build on what Mr. Kalaji said. So, yeah, knowledge is key. Uh, I just want to, you know, just clarify that the knowledge, it doesn't just speak to the technical side again. Uh, it speaks to the entire value chain. You need to know who your competitors are. You need to know the markets. You need to know, you know, how to produce. You need to know everything that has to do with the business, right? Uh, and again, uh, like I said, when we started the session, I think the right mindset to come into this space is to have a passion for it uh, and not just think that it's a quick money venture. I mean, it's a quick money making venture where you know I can double my capital overnight or whatever it is, right? Uh, there will be times when you're not. I mean, the numbers are not coming like you expect. And what would keep you for the long run is the fact that you're really passionate about you know uh, making some impacts on the space. And you know, believe believe me, like Mr. Kaleji has said, in the long run, it will it will all pan out. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad to be here. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and finally, uh, Mr. Mahmoud, you just want to give us your closing yeah, remarks. Yeah, I will stick to the same thing the other panelists have said. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. There's no limit to it. And then best flight. Hmm. So I wish our young men good luck. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So here we have it. Uh, the experts have spoken. And... Uh, if I want to join their years of experience, we should be saying 50 years and more, you know, combined experience here. And that is what is coming to the table. So one they have come to tell us is that aquaculture practice and aquaculture business is indeed profitable. Whether you are going into the archery, you are going into the production or you are going into the processing. Whichever side of the value chain you are operating on in the aquaculture sector, it is profitable. However, they have all reiterated to us today that knowledge is key. Getting the right team and the right people is also very key to ensuring that you do well. And most importantly, things would always be rough. Like they say, the road is never smooth from the beginning to the end. But what will keep you at that point in time is your passion. So I would like to end uh, this session by saying thanks to our panelists and also thanks to our moderator unfortunately who had some challenges with our network and i had to just come to support i want to say a very big thank you to everyone who has also joined us from wherever you are uh, for some people who had asked questions and you still need answers please you can still drop them on the youtube um, page we will pick it PSAG Nigeria will pick it and would ensure that we reach out to you you could share your email if you are not comfortable sharing um, if, if you're not comfortable sharing your phone numbers, you can put in your emails and we'll definitely reach you. Uh, so thank you once again. And we'd like to say the business of our culture masterclass will continue uh, with other sessions happening today. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. There's a story to be told, a future to behold. There is more to who we are than what they hear. We have love within our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our oil. We can grow the food to feed the whole world square. Agriculture is the key, there's treasure in the tree.